It may look like amateur hour, but this is the beginning of something serious, the drone invasion of America. This is how many of us first heard about drones as they were sent out to target and kill the West's enemies in foreign lands. However, here at home, there are now more than a million commercial drones or UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, roaming the skies. And if a couple of ambitious young Australians have their way, it won't be long before Americans are getting their pizzas delivered like this. Come here, Bloody. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> I see a future, a not too distant future, where drone delivery is, is ubiquitous. We're seeing a drone delivering a package to you or your neighbour is more common than seeing a, a postman or a FedEx van deliver packages today. It's mind-blowing. I'm sure a, a lot of people just don't even believe it, but it really is going to be incredible. Just see, like seeing an airplane in the sky, it, it'll be, yeah, I think it will be the norm. People won't think twice about it. It seems futuristic now and fraught with questions about safety and privacy, but the people working here are convinced it's coming. Not this year, but sooner than you think. Yeah, you know, I think door-to-door -door delivery is actually entirely realistic. Uh, I think that much of the technology is already in place. You see technology that is so incredibly transformative that you realize uh, you're on the cusp of something that could be just enormous. Nevada, the Wild West. Silver mining in the mid-1800s sparked a cycle of boom and bust that left more ghost towns here than anywhere else in America. Until 1930, just 19,000 people lived in Reno, 5,000 in Las Vegas. Nevada had more sheep and cattle than people. Then it gambled on gaming. Combined with the nation's easiest divorce laws, it cashed in on quickie divorces and casinos. The boom-bust cycle of the past has left Nevada wary. This is a state that's always looking for the next best bet. And like its neighbours across the border in Silicon Valley in California, Nevada is now staking its future on high tech. The University of Nevada, Reno, is spearheading the change. Driverless cars, robotics and unmanned aerial vehicles, drones, are all being developed here. And it's where a couple of young Aussies, Matt Sweeney and Tom Bass, have found a home. Their small company, Flirty, has had some remarkable success becoming the first in the crowded US market to make a commercial drone delivery, albeit under very controlled conditions. All right. Let's 
stuff. All right. Our next major goal is to conduct regular drone deliveries to customers in key cities around the world. And so the reason this is so significant is because it'll be the first time in history that you can order something on your smartphone and have a flying robot deliver it to your house. This bolt looks interesting. Let's, uh, let's tighten this a little bit. Many of the parts for their carbon fibre drones are made right here in the university's research lab on 3D printers. They're collaborating with some of the university's top engineering students, among them Camille Berkwin. I could not even tell you how awesome it is to be a part of a project that can change how people do things and um, how um, we see the world and the skies. It's great. And they've teamed up with National Space Agency, NASA, to design an air traffic system for drones with flight lanes above 60 and below 120 metres, well away from commercial airliners. How does it feel to be the guy from Sydney who came up with this idea, now <coughs> sitting in this position? <laughs> a, a few weeks ago I gave a speech to the US Congress and the US Senate. That is a long way away from Liverpool <laughs> in, in the western suburbs of Sydney. Sweeney grew up in Sydney, studied philosophy at university and went to China as an exchange student, where he first began experimenting with drone technology. The bright, brash 27-year-old has always had big plans and is not afraid to spruik them. I've had a dream ever since I was young to move to the US, be an entrepreneur and build an industry. And this is the fulfillment of that ambition. And yet your little flirty up against Google, Amazon, can you actually compete with them? I, I think that Amazon and Google are competing with us. When I look at the history of technology, it's very rarely the incumbent who wins when there is disruption. We're the visionaries who saw this industry and we've got a track record of achievement beating both Amazon and Google in a foot race to get the first FAA approval on their own soil. So, yes. For Sweeney, that foot race started in Sydney with a somewhat crazy proposition to a friend, Ahmed Haider, who was renting out textbooks. I said, you know, would it interest you if a flying robot could deliver the textbooks that you order any time that you want them wherever you are on campus? And they didn't know that I was serious, but I think that was enough to spark the fire. When the uh, flirty arrives to its location, it actually levitates above the location and lowers the parcel to the consumer. They didn't end up actually delivering any books, but they did get the marketing part right with a test flight in front of some Sydney icons in 2013. I remember waking up and seeing that we're on the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald, news.com.au and CNN. And we went viral. That led to an invitation to test the technology in Dubai. So what happened was kind of a bunch of kids from Australia landed in Dubai in a foreign culture in the middle of a desert and within two weeks conducted the world's first drone delivery to the president of the Aviation Authority and reached agreement on a million dollar deal with a party in a free trade zone. So it was an amazing sequence of events. But they were far from alone. All over the world, companies are pushing to save costs by replacing people with technology, including retail giant Amazon. Just months after Flirty's Sydney trial, 
Amazon released a video in the US showing its own drone delivery test. When I saw it, I thought that must be a stunt. They, they must be looking for some story to help their stock price. Uh, I, honestly, the last thing that I thought was that they were serious about it. Richard Kelly now designs the software used to integrate Flirty's drones with NASA. But back then, the robotics specialist wasn't a believer. My skepticism came from a lot of experience working with robots on the ground. Uh, it turns out that in spite of all of our imagination about robots as a, as a society, in practice, robots tend to break. Uh, and so a lot of the research that we've done has been aimed at reducing that problem, but we're still a ways off. Uh, and so the thought of having something that is flying, sometimes very, very quickly, with sharp propellers uh, and then breaking suddenly uh, is something that I just didn't even want to think about. Despite the very real concerns about safety, there's massive pressure from the consumer drone industry in the US to allow more trials. In 2013, the Federal Aviation Administration approved just six test sites, including Nevada. That's when Flirty moved from Sydney to the US, joining forces with the University of Nevada and Richard Kelly. The robotics expert changed his mind after building his own drone. Seeing for myself how simple the technology can be uh, really was the thing that, that brought me around. Tell me about your first meeting with Matt and Tom. What were your first impressions of them? They're very sharp. Uh, they said with a straight face that they were going to do drone delivery. And it's the same message that they've had uh, the entire time that I've known them and worked with them. It hasn't changed and they haven't gone off message. And yet there are a couple of young Australian guys up against the likes of Google and Amazon. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? You have these amazing companies that do amazing technical work and at the same time having seen what those companies are doing and watching what Matt and Tom and their team are doing, uh, I can say without hesitation or doubt that Flirty is right there with Amazon and with Google in terms of making drone delivery a reality. It's a really, really hard problem, but they are as well positioned to solve it as anyone I've seen or talked to. Last July, they finally cracked the big time. This is the first commercial drone delivery ever allowed by the US regulator, the Federal Aviation Administration. In rural Virginia, Flirty teamed up with a healthcare provider, Virginia Tech and NASA, to deliver medicine to a field clinic. A short autonomous flight within visual line of sight and with a lot of controls in place, but a milestone nonetheless. Once again, their PR skills matched their flying skills. Today, the drone delivery business had what some are calling its Kitty Hawk moment in reference to the town made famous by the Wright brothers. Chip Reed is in rural Virginia where a medical drone made house calls. That must have felt amazing. <laughs> it was an amazing feeling um, for everyone involved. And it wasn't just me. I mean, we had an incredible team behind us who designed and built the technology that enabled us to actually deliver on that promise. Uh, I'm still in awe that they were able to get that to work. Not because of the technology, which I'm entirely sold on, but the way that they were able to work with NASA Langley and with the FAA to get that delivery done is really amazing. It's one thing to fly here in the wide open sky over Nevada, but what if something went wrong above a highly populated city or town? How do you stop an out of control drone or a rogue operator? In Washington DC, 
Those issues are at the core of an aerial tug of war between the FAA and the drone industry. We have about 50,000 flights every day in the US, so it's a hugely complex and busy system with, of course, a lot of density in commercial aircraft, but also helicopters and private pilots and balloons and parachutists, and so it's a very congested airspace. And, and really, at the end of the day, our job is keeping everybody separate from each other. We're dealing with commercial aviation that has zero fatalities a year. We don't want that number to change. A new pilot himself, Mike Whitaker, is the face of the FAA's mission to integrate drones into the national airspace, as ordered by Congress. The demand for recreational drones has exceeded anyone's expectations. This demand is driven in large part by individuals who are completely new to the aviation experience. What's happened now is that the price of, of drones are so inexpensive that you have very responsible citizens who might receive one as a gift or buy one at the local store and they don't realize they've just become airmen in a complex system. Um, and I think that's when we started to see more incidents around airports. Drones themselves can be unreliable. And some of the worst behaviour from operators makes frightening viewing. Last year, commercial airline pilots reported about 100 drone sightings per month near airports. Yeah, about a mile back, there was a drone flying uh, just on the southwest side of this uh, abandoned airport here. They do have batteries in them, and these are dense, heavy metal pieces uh, that will call, wreak havoc on aircraft. When it hits a tra transport air category aircraft, when it hits one, there's going to be a significant event significant event. Whether it hits the windscreen, some piece of the flight control system, or is ingested in the engine, this is going to be a significant event. And for the flight crew, it's going to be a very challenging event to save the aircraft. Okay. Uh, anybody want to comment on that? It's uh, not my intent to scare anybody here today, no. but I, it is a significant event. The FAA agrees there is a place for drones used responsibly, such as information gathering after disasters and inspecting hard to get to infrastructure. But that's a long way from allowing everyday deliveries in busy urban areas, especially when a drone is out of the operator's line of sight. Right, so if I'm a pizza delivery company, it's going to be quite some time before I can use a drone to deliver pizza. It may be a while, and, and as we talk about stakeholder engagement, I think part of that engagement in, includes the, your neighbour who may not want a vehicle coming over her property to deliver your pizza. And so there will be a broader interests, uh, privacy interests, uh, neighbourhood interests, noise interests that have to really be part of that equation. Not, not everybody may embrace that concept of having uh, the smallest item delivered on demand. Um, so there will have to be some give and take in that and, and, and I think we'll get there within parameters and it may look a little different than people are imagining now. I think the big challenge is, is making the safety case to the world that not only is this technology feasible but it's also going to be safe and practical. What's missing is fail-safe technology to stop drones crashing into people, buildings or other aircraft. But it's coming. So for a single drone, the real issue is redundancy. Making sure that you have enough backup and safety systems on your platform so that if something does go wrong, because things always go wrong, uh, that the system can survive. Uh, so, for example, if a motor fails, can you stay in the air and land safely rather than just fall out of the sky? This is a story from the not-too-distant future. In time, there'll be a whole family of Amazon drones, different designs for different environments. Meanwhile, the commercial operators are getting frustrated with the regulators and are advertising services they're not actually allowed to provide yet. 
Back at the house, you're getting a message on your tablet to say that your Prime Air delivery is arriving. And it goes back to vertical mode and scans the landing area for potential hazards. The most important actor here is not the lawmaker or the regulator, it's the consumer. Drops off the package and flies straight back up to altitude. Will consumers be comfortable with these vehicles dropping off packages at their door? I'm totally comfortable with it, but then again, uh, you know, I'm different in terms of the average consumer. Um, and not because I'm better, it's just because I'm closer to this technology and I understand what it's capable of doing. And so. Michael Drobax paid to be comfortable with it. Drobak lobbies Congress for the Small UAV Coalition, now a powerful group. It wants new laws allowing commercial services in urban areas beyond visual line of sight, opening the way for door-to-door -door delivery. Clients include Google, Amazon, DJI, Flirty and others who believe the FAA has moved far too slowly. Amazon almost doubled its spending on lobbying last year to more than $9 million. This uh, imposes an incredible burden. We currently do not have a commercial rule, which means we don't have complete commercial viability. If we continue to have delays, which I'm hopeful we won't, but if we were to, companies would be forced to go overseas and to do the innovation and exploration of the technology and then operationalize it. There's been some criticism of the industry that you're too slow. How do you respond to that? Not everybody agrees we're going too slowly. Some people think we're going too, too fast. I've talked with helicopter pilots who very much believe that this low altitude is their airspace and don't let anybody come in, it's too dangerous. So we've got to strike that balance between that, that safety record and innovation. The FAA will allow broader commercial operations as soon as June. The safest operations will come first in rural or unpopulated areas where drones pose few risks. Door-to-door -door drone deliveries are not there yet, but there's a surprising admission from the FAA. They of course want to move very fast to the delivery model. Um, I think we will get to that delivery model. I think we still have to figure out what are the right technologies, what are the standards, and what are the interests of the other stakeholders, including homeowners and law enforcement and uh, you know, the safety of your pet in the backyard. So we've, we've really got to balance all of those interests, but I think we will get there. The commercial operators are racing to put the pieces together in a rapidly evolving industry. All right, cool. So we're pretty much good to go. We'll hitch it up in about five minutes. New drones that fly faster and carry bigger loads, batteries that last longer, artificial intelligence to create machines smart enough to fly themselves. It's another big day for the Flirty team. I'm pretty excited right now. We're on the way to the first suburban drone delivery test site in the United States. Our cameras and the eyes of a couple of powerful investors will be on today's test in the Nevada desert. Large companies don't necessarily become the innovators uh, in something that's outside of their core business. Very often it is a small company that's laser focused that really succeeds in developing a brand new technology. The most important part is the team. We've invested in the company and we've seen Matt really grow as a CEO over the last six to seven months. And uh, we're very bullish on their prospects in the long term. Today's test will be done under tightly controlled conditions at a disused part of the Hawthorne military base, two hours southeast of Reno. The holy grail for drone makers is to fly over urban areas beyond visual line of sight, a combination that's fraught with risk. Here today, they're achieving one of those goals 
flying over an urban setting. Your objective, Roger. Things don't go perfectly. The first flight is aborted due to a faulty battery. It's always when people are watching. Oh, there's some issue with the battery, so they're probably getting, getting some interesting readings from it. So it's a precaution, we just send it back. But the operation is soon back on track. <laughs> Rations pack. There. You want to grab that one? Okay. <laughs> MREs, we've got a first aid kit and we've got a bottle of water. For these young entrepreneurs, it's just another step on the way to their eventual goal of a world full of drones, whether the rest of us like it or not. Well, well done. Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> get in tight, get in tight. Yeah, yeah that's it. Come on, smile, David. All right. Camera. Everyone say flirty. You've had a lot of high five moments. Are, are you still having your sort of uh, moments as well? Um, Frustrations? A, uh, being in a startup is like chewing glass and staring into the abyss. <laughs> there is always things that go wrong, but determination, resilience, and, and focusing on the vision enables you to march forward even, even in those circumstances. As Deng Xiaoping said, it's crossing the river by filling for stones. We will incrementally roll this out to the point where it's ubiquitous around the world. Technology always wins, and those that are detracting or, or trying to find fault with it will find themselves in the wrong side of history.